Gamers, my name is Jake, and welcome to a very special exploration. Today we visit an incredible vintage mall, and also perhaps the most dangerous place we have ever been. The structure began its life back in the early 1900s, when it was purpose-built as a factory for Savage Arms, a weapons manufacturer most famous for the Model 99 hunting rifle and the Tommy gun. After the wars, the company left their factory in the early 1950s, and Spare Univac, a computer company, had taken the building a few years later. Enterprise-grade computers were built there until they too had closed in the late 1970s. For a few years, the facility was left dormant, until it saw an unlikely use. In the early 1980s, the property was repurposed into an outlet mall. There's so many different ways we can go here. Do you want to go? Well, I don't know if we should go in. Do you want to go in this building here? Right, let's, let's take a look inside this. You know what these were, Matt? What? These were partitions um, when the stores closed, I think. Oh, look at, yeah, look at these. Those are dressing rooms. Oh, wow. This was a clothing store. Hey, I don't know if we should walk under this. Yeah, look at the, the racks. Wow. Look at that view. See the clothing racks, or uh, the <laughs> clothing racks? See the changing rooms back there? Wow. The lights are still still up there. Yeah, I think for our own safety, it's best that we don't walk under these floors. Look at the ceiling styling. Oh man, the roof is completely gone. I would not trust this. Nope. Rooms. You do not want to be walking on this. I can't believe this. Let's go into the brewing company. This looks like a wasteland now. That was like a gazebo, or not a gazebo, but like a, a little stage or something right there. I can see right through to the roof all the way up there. This building is just a couple years from total collapse on the inside. Yeah, this is what I call treacherous in here. Yeah, it looks like there's concrete under this, so I think we're fine. And if not, we will find out. Yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> Man, look at this. What happened here? Was someone trying to get under this, or is this natural, do you think? I think it's from getting wet over the years. I mean, that is some, that is some substantial warping. Oh, yeah, you're kind of right, because look how... The beam under this is sort of uh, bowing itself mm -hmm. and tearing the whole thing up. That's insane. Because these top panels aren't very strong. No, so. yeah. This, I think, is probably the most treacherous building we've ever been in. This thing is a death trap.
The shopping center operated successfully through the mid-1980s as a factory outlet mall, mainly housing small, local shop tenants as well as restaurants and cafes. The interior courtyards of the former factory were turned into street-lit concourses, creating walking paths and social areas within. However, by the late 1980s, the local area had become more rough, and the enormous building became too difficult to keep up, and the property quickly became run down. By 1991, the mall had officially closed, and the property was rebranded as a business center, with small portions of square footage leased to private businesses. This is likely why we see the brewery signage as the main centerpiece now, but also see the courtyards and the storefronts frozen in place elsewhere. The building was left in this half-abandoned, half-in-use state all the way until around 2009, when finally the structure was condemned due to building code violations. Courtyard Cafe. Huh. This, look in there. That's terrifying. Jesus. Yeah. More of these street lights and the planters here. Christmas lights. Looks like one of the utility areas here. Country Mill, ladies, sportswear, something else. But look at the, uh, look at the stage here. Oh yeah, this is the stage outside the pub. Oh yeah, look at restaurant, restaurant and wharf. Huh. So, the courtyards continue to go on. Layaway policy. More of these planters that have, well, overgrown. Oh. Not much vandalism though, which is kind of surprising for how wrecked it is. I'm assuming it was scrappers, but this has obviously been closed for a long time. Oh, man. Oh, look at this. Promotional advertising services. Screen printing on t-shirts, hats, mugs, pens, and calendars. <laughs> oh my god. What do you mean? It's a paint shop. Yeah, no kidding. Look at all them. Dude, this is unbelievable. Uh, look at all these canvases. Oh, yeah, what is this? I think that's an old fashioned paint mixer. It slices down the, uh, maybe not. Either it's for the canvases or it's for the paint. Yeah, it might be a, no, it's a, uh, what is this? Yeah, I don't know. It looks like uh, one of those slicing. I think you're right because that looks like a blade. Yeah. Lake Ontario. I don't understand what these were though. It's like these were painted on, painted or printed on like uh, translucent. Uh, I, I don't even know what you would call this. These are all like the reference booklets. Look at that.
my God. January 12th, 1998. Oh, wait, no. Bill Date, 1997. This is crazy. Look at the printing press here. Or printing machine, actually. Wait a minute. Yeah, what is this? This That's is a camera. You know what it is? I think it's um Look at the lens. Yeah, I think it's made for three-dimensional 2D animation. That is fascinating. Look at that. I'm assuming that's how they make these then, almost in a 3D, 3D format. Huh. If anyone knows exactly what this is, let us know. Oh, you know what? Maybe they put the canvas in there and it takes the picture of whatever is in this I glass. Think, I think the canvas could look through the mirror on the other side of this. Yeah, it's like right. Like so so like that's how they the make these cost. sort of translucent uh, frames. I think they put the original right there, like you said. Yeah. Photoshop. Just look at the lights putting the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Whoa. Oh. Yeah, that probably happened in the winter time. All right, let's get out of here. I don't like this. Claiming this is the most dangerous place is not an understatement. Every single building on the property is nothing short of a disaster waiting to happen. In the main buildings, the floors are made of wood, which is currently rotting away. Even the external brick walls are falling apart. After seeing the roof from the air, I imagine as soon as that gives way, the entire interior would collapse in on itself. Oh, wow. After seeing the interior state of this, we decided to stick to the bottom floors and not walk very far into any of the buildings which clearly had decaying wood above. Police often monitor the property, so I strongly suggest you not visit here yourself. It's a genuinely dangerous place. If that doesn't convince you enough though, another reason might, which we'll discover soon. Oof, it smells like fire, doesn't it? What in the... What happened here? This was a car repair shop, I think. And someone set fire to it. Incredibly, with absolutely no knowledge from us, just two days prior to our visit here, one of the buildings had been set fire to in several points. This area with the charred vehicle was set on fire just 30 days before we visited. Multiple fire events have occurred in the span of just two months, and not surprisingly, all cases were deemed as arson. This makes sense as to why police have been cracking down on the property, since forcing firefighters inside these buildings as they're on fire is obviously extremely dangerous. Is there a single structure in this facility that isn't deadly? I already know the answer to that, but... Whoa. Huh. I wonder what this was. What do you think, Matt? It definitely looks like a place that's been repurposed. It kind of looks like a, a repair shop, though, doesn't it? I would think that maybe... Once that closed, they had leased this part of the building and made it into a repair shop or something. But the paints, um, the paint scheme on this is like 80s or 70s. So I don't know. Damn. There's a bird. There's graffiti on the charred corpse of it, so 
Maybe it's not as recent. It still smells like fire in here, though. That's nice. Oh. Oh man, they're still wrapped too. Look at that. Huh. Very obscure place. What a weird place. It's so hard. It's so hard to really pin your finger on like what this is really useful. So I know. Different things just around. It's ridiculous. Yeah. We have a bar, a repair shop, a kind of. You know, a shopping awesome. district. I think you're right. I think. Yeah. Once things started changing, they probably started leasing out a lot of that yeah. extra new space. And this is a big garage. This is a big repair facility, if so. Whoa. Whoa. What in the world? Oof, this, this is mud. mud. Be very careful in this. There goes my shoes. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god. I keep hearing terrifying noise. You hear stuff too, right? Wait, what was that? Again, I guess Wait, shh. Shh, shh. Did you just hear someone say hello? Hello? Hello. Progressive Casualty Insurance. Jaguar. Oh, Jaguar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is an F type. Insurance auto options. I think that's the Land Rover Sport. What's this, a 5 Series? I think it's a 5 Series. BMW 5 Series. Look at this. Man, they cut the rims right off. Holy man, look at that. Jeez. It's hard for me to believe whatever was going on in this part of the building had been legally operating up until recently. Oh, there's some Mercedes right here, too. This is a newer one, actually. Yeah, I, this is a newer Mercedes. This is like a 2012 or 13 or 14. I believe this is a Mercedes CLS from around 2014, which means at some point, someone had to put it here past its manufacturing date. Inside this decaying building, alongside other destroyed luxury vehicles. So, your guess is as good as mine. Why is this, why does this building have such a new Mercedes in here? This thing looks like it's been, a, this building looks like it's been abandoned for <laughs> like 30 years. Sure, this does look like it's kind of like an underground kind of thing. I mean, like, look at the whack of front end damage you have the whole vehicle. Yeah, the vehicle's charred. They're putting it somewhere. Obviously, our trip into what I thought was just a vintage mall had taken us to some other interesting finds, but now it was time for us to leave. Despite the property still under private ownership, clearly whatever plans they had to redevelop likely just won't happen. The city wants it gone, and eventually, one way or another, that's probably going to happen. Today, the vintage, abandoned mall stands completely abandoned a continuing risk for fire and collapse, but also an incredible and unique look at a once thriving outlet mall. Thanks for watching everyone.